So grabbing that spherical bearing, again, this is the biggest bearing that I could find on McMaster. It's a three and a half inch OD and a one and a half inch ID, and it allows for some really serious bolts. So I'm making these cuts here. This is where the lower control arm is going to interface with the tall knuckle. And so I'm grabbing the hardware that I used on the top part of the tall knuckle, which is a C-clip with a little groove in there and then flanged boss to capture it on the other side and making sure that all those dimensions are identical between those two parts, making sure that the chamfer is the right size so that it can allow the misalignment spacers to cycle without interfering and saving this part as lower control arm. That's super exciting because that means the front suspension is halfway done. So these cuts are to make room for the center diff and this is where the bushings are going to interface. So what I like to do in these assemblies is make all of the parts fixed in space at a neutral ride height and then make sure all my mates are correct. That way nothing is moving around in space and in case I need to do any reference geometry, everything's gonna work out. So what I ended up doing with this part is making it a larger assembly that includes all the hardware, but that's going to come later. I'm fixing some of these angles so that the cuts are going to be correct. So you can see how I have those two kickdowns that are at different angles, which would make the part really challenging to machine on the vertical operation. But I think if I get those angles to be parallel to each other, it's going to make the whole thing a lot easier to cut. So these circles represent a mock-up of where the shocks are going to go. 